Hello, and welcome back for part three of conics applications. So our last conic we're looking at is the hyperbola. And so as always, first, let's go through how do we define a hyperbola? Um, basically, the way that I like to think about it in simple terms is just it's kind of like a double parabola. So you can see that we have these two branches here. Um, I try to do like some color coding, but that's going to be in purple. And obviously, if we just had a parabola, we would only have like one of those. Um, and then each one of these is going to have a focus. Um, again, that's going to be located on the inside of the curve. And we also have two vertices, just like a parabola has a vertex. Um, these two branches also each have a vertex. And we have these two asymptotes. Um, they're not a part of the graph, but they just sort of help like guide um, the direction that these branches are going. Um, so you can see I have these dotted blue lines here, and it's just kind of showing um, kind of what these, what the end behavior is, you know, what it's approaching. And there are equations like to find out what the asymptotes are and everything, but we're just kind of looking at the structure. We also have a transverse axis. This can be either vertical or horizontal. Um, the way that I like to think about it is just that it's the axis that passes through both of the vertices. It also passes through each focus, um, but I think it's easier to think about it in terms of the vertices. So um, the vertices in this case are those red dots, and you can see the transverse axis just passes through them. So it's kind of like, like what determines um, um, whether or not the hyperbola is vertical or horizontal. So for example, um, let's do orange here. I think this is what I would call a vertical one. So let's say we had a horizontal one. You know, it would kind of be the other way around where we would have the branches in the other direction. And then in this case, um, we have the vertices right here. So that's a change. And so now our transverse axis is horizontal. And so, yeah, it just kind of, it helps, um, it helps you determine like which way um, the hyperbola is opening up. So that's our structure. And let's move on to applications. Let me tell you, it's, it's hard to find applications for hyperbolas because they are very unique. Um, but we can look at it three-dimensionally, kind of like how we talked about the parabola. So um, technically, like a three-dimensional shape that resembles a hyperbola, we call that hyperboloid. Um, you don't need to know that, but I just, I want to be correct, so I just wrote it in there. And so we can talk about hyperbolas in terms of cooling towers. Um, you can see here, I kind of, I tried to outline it on one of these cooling towers um, to show you that it does resemble a hyperbola. So if you look in the upper left, you can see this is kind of like a horizontal one. Our transverse axis is horizontal, that's in like the light blue. And then um, we have the two branches, which are red. Um, you can see like they kind of dip in a little bit. It's not that much, but there is a little bit of a curve there. And then we have those two asymptotes, which are in purple. So obviously I'm drawing this on a three-dimensional shape, which is probably not a good thing to do, but I'm just trying to show you like it resembles that structure. And you can see on the right, um, kind of like the difference between when we're talking about the conic section of a hyperbola versus when we're talking about the three-dimensional shape. So if you took a, um, a um, <laughs> if you took a cross section of a cone, then you kind of get this um, like two pieces for the hyperbola. We have this little point in the middle. But then on the left, if you kind of like give it a waist, I guess, um, you end up just getting like one section. And if you sort of rotate that around, then you get the three-dimensional shape. And 
that is what cooling towers are. So just for fun, if you're interested in um, structural engineering, nuclear engineering, a lot of different things engineering related, um, I'm just going to talk about why this structure is advantageous. So first of all, the purpose of a cooling tower is to release excess heat from a plant. Um, it could be like a coal burning plant or something of that sort. So basically the point of having it kind of slimmer in the middle is that the water vapor that's rising up in there, the smaller area is going to cause it to move faster. If it's moving faster, it's going to get hotter. And as you know, hot air rises. So now that this water vapor is hotter, it's going to rise quicker um, out of the plant, which is what we want. And you're probably thinking, wait, it's a cooling tower. Why is it heating up the water vapor? And that's just to kind of get it out of the way. Um, but now, like at the very top, we sort of um, we increase the area. And by doing that, we can kind of diffuse the water vapor into the atmosphere. So it's kind of just like taking in that heat, speeding up, facilitating evaporation, kind of getting it out of the way, and then opening it back up at the top to kind of diffuse it. So that is why they make them that way. Um, and then obviously the base is wider because you don't want it to topple over. And so that's pretty much it for the applications. Um, thank you for watching this segment.